Hi, welcome back. Dear students, in this session, we are going to discuss Unit 2 of Class 10 English Reader. The topic is wit and humor. Here, we will transact the face sheet as well as reading a the dear departed. First of all, let us take a look at the face sheet of Unit 2. Look at here, dear students. What do you find in the picture? Two animals. What are they? A cat and a rat. What do you understand with this picture? There is a pistol in the hands of the rat and it wants the cat. Right. Do you remember any comic associated with this picture? Yes, there it is. It's none other than Tom and Jerry. Who is Tom? A cat. Who is Jerry? A rat. In the cartoon show, Tom always keeps changing Jerry. Jerry always gives a skip to Tom. So it's so funny cartoon show. Right. Then what could have been the conversation between this cat and the rat? Perhaps they converse with each other in this manner. Rat says. Hands up. Why? Because you changed me yesterday. But I changed you to tell you one thing. What's that? I wanted to say I would never change you thereafter. Right. Hereafter you should not change me. Understood? Yes, I understood. Meow. Then leave off the side. Okay. Thank you. Meow. Meow. So that's the conversation between the rat and the cat here. Now let us switch over to the one act to play the dear departed. Here, let me introduce the characters of this play. There are two sisters and they are Amelia Slater and Elizabeth. Amelia's husband is Henry Slater and Elizabeth's husband is Ben Jordan. Amelia and Henry have a daughter named Victoria. Elizabeth and Ben's son's name is Jim. And here let me introduce one more interesting character and he is the protagonist of this play and he is none other than Abel Mary Weather. And now, let's go through the play. When the curtain raises, Mrs. Slater is seen laying the table. She is vigorous, plump, red-faced, vulgar woman prepared to do any amount of straight talking to get her own way. She is in black. She goes to the window, opens it and calls into the street. Alright, this is the introduction of Amelia Slater. How does she look like? She is Plump. Plump means fatty. A person who grows extra adipose is nothing but plump. She is fatty. She is vigorous. Quite energetic and healthy. And red faced and vulgar. And she is in black now. Why? Okay, let's know in a couple of minutes. Now, Mrs. Slater says, Victoria! Victoria! Die here! Victoria, a precocious girl, dressed in colors, comes in. Victoria, a precocious girl. Precocious means, take a look at here. Intelligent. Intelligent. Or gifted. Right. She's an intelligent girl. And she is in colorful dress now. Now Mrs. Slater speaks. I imagine that you, Victoria, are really young. Be off now and change your address before your aunt Elizabeth and your uncle Ben come. I would never do for them to find you in colors with a grandfather lying dead upstairs. What does Amelia say here? She orders Victoria to get her dress changed. What for? Because her grandfather, her grandfather means father of Amelia is dead. Is dead where? Upstairs. Then why should she get her dress changed as a token of mourning? As she has to get her dress changed. And the dress should be in black color. French. Victoria says, What are they coming for? They haven't been here for ages. So, why are they coming? They haven't been here for ages. For ages means for a long time. Victoria questions. She does not know why her uncle and aunt are coming all of a sudden. Because they haven't come for ages. Mrs. Slater says, 
They are coming to talk over poor grandpa's affairs. Your father sent them a telegram as soon as we found he was dead. As soon as his father-in-law is dead upstairs, what has Henry done? He posted a telegram to Elizabeth and Ben. Elizabeth is the sister of Amelia and Ben, her husband. Wretch. Then a noise is heard. Henry Slater. Here is an introduction of Henry Slater. Henry Slater, a stooping, means bent down, bent down like this. A stooping, heavy man with a drooping mustache, drooping mustache. He is wearing a black tail coat, grey trousers, a black tie and a bowler hat. So that's the introduction of Henry. How does he look like? He walks in stooping and he has a drooping mustache and the kind of dress worn by is depicted here. Right. Now Henry speaks. I am wondering if they will come at all. When you and Elizabeth quarrelled, she said she would never set foot in your house again. Here. Henry gives us a little info. Once upon a time, Amelia and Elizabeth quarreled with each other. And then, Elizabeth threw a challenge. What was the challenge? I would never set foot in your house. In that manner, she threw a challenge and left. I left the house. <coughs> Mrs. Lerches. She will come fast enough to alter her share of what our father's left. You know how hard she can be when she likes. Where she gets it from, I can't tell. Here, Amelia says her sister would definitely come because she wants to get her share of property. I suppose it's in the family. Where are my slippers? Mrs. Rear says. In the kitchen. But you bought a new pair, those old ones are nearly worn out. Nearly breaking down. You don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear up like I am doing. My heart's fit to break when I see the little trifles that belong to Father lying around and think he'll never use them again. And briskly, here. You'd better wear those slippers of my father. No, it's lucky. He would just got a new pair. Here Amelia says Henry's slippers are worn out and they are replaced with her father's new pair of slippers. So Henry says, they'll be very small for me, my dear. What does he say? His father's in law slippers won't fit him because they are smaller in size. Mrs. Slater says, they will stretch, won't they? I'm not going to have them wasted. She has finished laying the table. Henry, I've been thinking about that bureau of my father's that's in his bedroom. You know, I always wanted to have it after he died. Look at here the selfish attitude of Amelia. At first, she wants her husband's slippers are replaced with her father's. Anna, she wants to own the bureau of her father's which is located on the upstairs. What do you mean by a bureau? A writing desk with drives. A writing desk with drives. And now Henry says, You must arrange with Elizabeth when you are dividing things up. So, what does Henry say here? As in when Elizabeth comes and the negotiations are going on between Amelia and Elizabeth, they would divide the property equally. Mrs. Slater says, Elizabeth, that sharp she'll see I'm after it and will drive a hard bargain over it. Drive a hard bargain. Take a look at the meaning here. Work hard to negotiate agreements in one's own favor. That's the meaning of drive a hard bargain. If at all Elizabeth comes and negotiates, she wants to get most of the things in her favor. So that's the meaning of the idiom in this context. Now Henry says, perhaps she has got her eyes on the bureau as well. Now Henry suspects Elizabeth's eyes are on bureau as well. The bureau is costly. Mrs. Slater says, she's never been here since father bought it. If it was only down here instead of it in his room, she would never guess it wasn't all our own.
here amelia discloses the fact that elizabeth does not know when her father bought the bureau now henry says starting means he gets a shivered a bit amelia mrs slater says henry why should we bring that bureau down here now we can't do it before they come have you understood the intention of amelia here she wants to steal the bureau of her father but henry gets worried to the greater quarters then what happens we shall discuss the rest of the play in the next session so far what has happened in the story in a nutshell amelia's father is dead on the upstairs a telegram was sent by amelia's husband henry to amelia's sister and her husband victoria is the daughter of amelia and henry amelia orders victoria to get her colorful dress changed with the black ones thereafter Amelia thinks of stealing father's slippers and bureau. So the story is ended at this point for now, and rest of the story will be dealt in the subsequent classes. Now let's take a look at the important words and their meanings. Get her own way. This is an idiom, and its meaning is persuade other people to allow you to do what you want. Once again, persuade other people to allow you to do what you want. Die. Die means do you. Die means do you. Precocious, precocious means intelligent or gifted or talented. All right, bureau. Bureau means a writing desk with drawers. Again, a writing desk with drawers. Next one. Drive a hard bargain. Work hard to negotiate agreements in one's own firm. Work hard to negotiate agreements in one's own firm. Look at the passage here. What are they coming for? They haven't been here for ages. Now some questions and answers. Who is the speaker? Answer. Victoria is the speaker. B. Who is the speaker talking to? Answer. The speaker is talking to her mom, Amelia Slater. C. They in quotations. They in the passage refer to. Answer. They in the passage refer to Elizabeth Jordan and Ben Jordan. D. Where are they coming to? Where are they coming to? Answer. They are coming to Amelia's house. And this is all about the dear departed one act play. And the rest of the play will be transacted in my next session. Until then, bye. Thanks for watching.